Once again, the time has come for me to introduce some of the things that I've added to my collection in the last month or so since my last video. And I've got some pretty interesting things to show you this time, I think, including what we have right here. This is an original sculpture by the artist Kyle Bodet. Someone, I believe, on Reddit first tagged me and just, just to show me that he had posted about this uh, sculpture that he made, and then later on he uh, said he was going to be selling it, and I think a couple people on Twitter probably uh, mentioned that to me. I'm always thankful when people do that, by the way. It's uh, nice that people think of me when they see things like this on the internet. In any case, uh, I was really intrigued by this statue because it's got a really cool kind of... Uh, caricature-like style that I really like, and, uh, you know, <laughs> everything from the way he's holding his hands here to the expression on his face is uh, kind of unique for a Java statue. Definitely got a bit of a comical streak to it. As I say, this is made of Sculpey modeling clay on a couple of wooden blocks that he's screwed together, I guess. You can see the screws right there. And uh, un as I understand it, he, you know, used kind of a, a ball of uh, aluminum foil in the si inside, which is a common thing to do. I've done myself, so you don't have to use as much clay. And in fact, it may prevent it from cracking when you're curing it, I, I think. And then he, he painted it as well. Uh, I have a few shots of him, uh, you know, in earlier stages, including this uh, <laughs> this really funny alternate version. I almost wish he had decided to keep because it shows uh, Jabba as a gamer with a controller in his hands and everything. I think that was pretty funny, but I do like the uh, the standard version just as well. So anyway, uh, I got in contact with Kyle, and he uh, I don't know that he had heard of my site beforehand, but when he checked it out. He seemed impressed and uh, seemed kind of willing to maybe, you know, make a little bit of a sacrifice in terms of the amount of money he would accept uh, to, you know, get this into my collection, which I'm always appreciative of. Uh, I, I don't have just unlimited funds for this kind of thing, unfortunately, but I think we, we came to an, uh, an agreement that was uh, Good for both of us. And part of that agreement was that he would uh, not only sell me this uh, Jabba here, which is, you know, it's a fairly hefty little figure. There he is. Jabba KB, Kyle Bodette. But he would uh, make another figure kind of, you know, at my request of some other character. So after a little thought, I decided I would go with this. This is, as you can probably tell, uh, Max Rebo, but it is not the traditional Max Rebo. It is based on the original maquette, the uh, so-called, uh, you know, red ball jet version that was uh, done by Phil Tippett. As I've explained in my um, Java's Palace roll call video about Max Rebo, basically the original concept for Max had him like this with two hand or two legs that he would use to play the piano and then just long, kind of uh, flipper-like, I don't know if they're even ears, but they're, you know, they're long flippers, essentially. So he's almost like a, a penguin with overdeveloped legs. You can see the uh, video I just mentioned for the whole story about that, but suffice it to say that uh, this was the original concept, and it's not even entirely clear that what we saw in the film wasn't actually supposed to be exactly this concept, and we've just kind of, because of the way uh, Kenner interpreted the figure as being a bipedal alien, uh, that we, we've we come to think of him as that way. But this is the original uh, design, and he was able to do a pretty cool interpretation of that. Uh, it's very similar to the original maquette. He decided to, you know, he's, he's got all the kind of uh, sketches and everything that Tippett made, so that was easy to recreate from that. But he has a little bit of, I think, Kyle's style in him as well. And I don't think there have been any kind of official or even really unofficial statue made of uh, 
Max Rebo in this condition, in this original state. So that's pretty cool to have in my collection. If you want to see more of what Kyle is doing, he has some 2D work as well as 3D work like sculpting like this. You can check out his Instagram. I will link it in the description below. One other item I got just a couple days ago is this pin from Fuzzball Flare, which is a new, uh, well, I don't know if it's a company per se. It's, it's run by uh, Twilight Quinn on Instagram, I believe. Uh, it's basically just her <laughs> private company or, uh, you know, enterprise for making cute little pins like this. But she has a couple of them, including this one, which says, Live, Laugh, Poodoo, which is pretty hilarious. Kind of a takeoff on the Live, Laugh, Love, you know, very trite uh, signs that sometimes people have. Poodoo, by the way, is a funny word because, you know, officially it means bantha fodder or bantha feed, I guess, but they pretty much use it interchangeably with poop, you know, in terms of the, the meaning of it. So anyway, interesting. There we have a little information there. And also she included a couple of stickers, which is uh, this Java and Salacious Crumb, which is the same design. And then we have Qui-Gon and the uh, bigger, or the, not the bigger fish, I guess this is the smaller fish. Whatever this was, I don't know, I can't remember. I even have the toy from Phantom Menace this is based on, but I can't remember what its name is. But, you know, those of you who know, you'll know what this is made from. Uh, she has, uh, I think, some other Java-related things maybe in the works, like something to do with Max Rebo. She's a big fan of Max Rebo, I understand. So definitely check her out on Instagram if you are interested. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I made a whole video about it. I was so excited about getting this. Um, I made a whole video about this particular thing and also related Jabba the Hutt pajamas or sleepwear items. And it was my worst performing video for a long time. So I don't know if people just are not interested in that or maybe it was a bad thumbnail or something. But if you're interested in kind of vintage clothing or just, you know, vintage kid stuff from the Star Wars era, uh, I would think you might want to check it out. This particular one here is the uh, Jabba the Hutt pajamas from Wilker Brothers in 1983, and they're super hard to find, especially in the package. I've been waiting for years to find one like this, so, you know, I was excited anyway. Give the video a shot if you haven't seen it yet. I think you might be interested. Next up we have these guys. These are giant pins based on the Funko Pop figures of various Star Wars figures that, uh, or Star Wars characters, I should say, that Funko has made. These ones, of course, are the Jabba ones. I say ones because uh, they have a standard one and a Chase edition, which, you know, it, the box itself is the same, but they have a little Chase sticker there. I think... Well, let's see. Let's look on the back here. I can't recall if they actually tell you how... No, they don't say anything about, like, how uh, common the chase is, but I think it's like one in six or something like that. You get a chance to get the chase. Um, I don't like these chase figures very much because, they're you know, the entire purpose of them is to get you to buy more than you actually need. But what I did was ended up... I just ended up buying uh, these two as a set on eBay, and it wasn't that bad, actually. I got a pretty good deal on them, so not not too upset about it, I guess, but I don't like the concept. Um, so if you want to see what the difference is, aside from that little chase sticker right there, I'm going to go ahead and open these up. I have opened them before, and, you know, it is nice that you can put them back in the box, basically, without any problem for storage or display. So these are honkin' big pins. They're just gigantic. I don't know if anyone would actually want to wear these as a pin, but, you know, they're big pieces of metal with enamel on them. So that's cool. I mean, I, I think they're, they seem well made. And if we look on the back, they've got the little Funko crown all as a design. We have Star Wars, uh, copyright 2021 Funko. Now, uh, so they've got the three you know, pin, I don't know what they call these things, but the three uh, pin points there. 
if you were to actually want to wear them, but they also have an integrated metal stand. Look at that. I thought that was very clever, and I did quite appreciate that. I, I, when I first heard about these, they said something about there being a stand, but I figured it would be like an acrylic stand that you had to place them in, which is not nearly as nice as having it be part of the actual pin, I think. So let's open up the Chase version of the figure and see if you can actually tell the difference. I'm not sure you can. Let's see here. Okay, there he is. Basically the only difference that I can see is that this one here is a more yellowish color and this one is a more greenish color. Uh, also, it seems like you, you can see the metal here, like the reflection, the, uh, let me move this over here, the wrinkles and everything, you can see the metal is reflective, whereas on the Chase version, it seems like they've put a layer of enamel or something on top of that, so they're not nearly as reflective. Some people have speculated that maybe they're sort of doing it as an homage to the original Vintage Jabba figurine, which is more of a yellowish color. Maybe that seems like it might be a little obscure for Funko, but maybe, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, I don't think... Well, there's also one minor difference. You can see this, this line on his tongue is a lot more distinct on the uh, Chase figure, it seems. But it's, it's a subtle difference, if I'm honest, and I'm not sure it's worth paying a lot of extra money to get the Chase. But... Uh, I'm kind of glad to have them both. Now, I also, in addition to these two, I'll move these out of the way for now, I ordered the other three characters, which you may have caught a glimpse of. Uh, we've got, uh, let's see, Han Solo, Lando, and Leia. And I have in hand Han Solo and Lando. Leia, even though I pre-ordered her months ago, and is She's fairly uh, commonly available on eBay and other places, as far as I can tell. Is not here and is not supposed to come until maybe the end of July, which is lots of fun. Uh, so I decided to just, you know, go ahead and put them in this video after all. I, I had them actually at the time of my last collection pickups video, and I was like, well, I'll just wait until Leia comes in, but it's not going to happen anytime soon, it seems. So if we look at uh, Lando here, pretty much the same deal as Jabba, although his metal is uh, not gold, it's silver, but pretty much the same construction with the stand and all. Let's take a look at Han Solo. He is interesting. He has got kind of a gunmetal or a, you know, dark gray color metal, and the pin itself is also a dark metal, but it's pretty reflective, so it's like a dark mirror. There we go. So, you know, <laughs> I do like these. Um, I know a lot of people are not crazy about the Funko Pop figures, and I'm not a huge fan of them either, but these are cool, uh, and Honestly, I like them better than the actual Funko Pop figures, probably. Especially because the Star Wars ones are all bobbleheads that move around uncontrollably, and, you know, the heads tend to get twisted in different directions and things like that, so... Uh, I'd say these are pretty cool. Next up is an item that was actually included in a subscription box from Geek Fuel, I guess, although I got it separately. Uh, this is a box that includes just the uh, Salacious Crumb and Hookah parts from the original Kenner uh, Action Playset, Jabba Action Playset. Uh, now, the reason this even exists as a thing is basically that Kenner, back in the day, made way too many of these accessories for some reason. I'm not entirely sure. It seems like they may have made more than... They made of the actual playset, and in any case, they famously had just boxes and boxes of these left over, and to the extent that they are still available today, brand new, as new old stock, and uh, can be included in a subscription box. In fact, there was also a place, uh, I'm not sure if it's related to this or not, but they had 
uh, been selling, and I guess you can still buy them as kind of a, you know, they had a big box that you might plop down in a store uh, of these, you know, you'd selling them individually, uh, both Salacious and the Hookah Pipe. This one, um, so it's in a box, as you can see, which is kind of cool. That was the main, obviously, the main draw for me is that it came with a box because I literally have just a bag full of Salacious Crumbs, many of them brand new in the bag, you know, just, they were not expensive either. So I'm not super interested in getting more Salacious Crumbs or Hookah Pipes for that matter. But this new uh, box was kind of cool. So let's open it up. We have inside, they've made it to look kind of like the vintage throne on the top there. And they've got the uh, gargoyles. And then inside, I mean, this is kind of a big box for what it is, but it just has Salacious Crumb there. And then the hookah pipe with his, uh, you know, all the accoutrement there. Very interesting that <laughs> this is still a thing that you can buy even today. But uh, yeah, uh, definitely a cool little addition to the collection. Definitely something that's right up my alley. Next up, we have another Geeky Tiki uh, ceramic mug from the people at Beeline Creative, who are behind the whole Geeky Tiki's phenomenon. It's almost as extensive a line as uh, Funko Pop figures at this point, I think. They released this uh, Max Rebo Geeky Tiki um, about a month ago. And, you know, obviously as a collector of the Java-related ones, I was happy to see that, although I was a little disappointed that they weren't going to be releasing the entire band. Uh, but more on that in a minute. Uh, this is pretty well done. It's a little unusual in the sense that it has the Max Rebo band here written on his base. Most of the other ones, well, none of the other ones that I have, have any kind of lettering on them. But uh, otherwise, in terms of the style and whatnot, it seems comparable. Um, of course, he's got this large bass in the form of his uh, piano. So this probably holds quite a bit of liquid compared to the typical Geeky Tiki, I would, I would imagine. I don't, I've never actually drunk out of any of the Geeky Tikis. <laughs> I probably should at some point, just to say that I have, but, uh, yeah, um, I was glad to see that they released the Max Rebo, and uh, not too long ago, they, on, uh, their Instagram page, posted this image, which, uh, basically says that they're going to be releasing the entire Rebo band in Geeky Tiki form sometime this fall, so I'm happy to, about that. I don't quite understand why they released Just Max in this form first, though, Unless maybe they just were, you know, testing the waters or whatever. Uh, they weren't sure if people were interested in buying the entire band. I don't know. I will be getting the band for sure to add to my growing and fairly sizable collection of Java-related Geeky Tikis. Fair number of pins on today's entry, but this is one of my favorite pins of all time, probably. It is from Nerd Matters. They're on Instagram and they sell on Etsy various kinds of pins and things. Uh, this was basically uh, called a Choose Your Own Java Pin. And what they mean by that is that they've managed to uh, incorporate a rotating mechanism in here that allows you to swap out this Java here, this horrible uh, CGI Java that they inserted into A New Hope, and replace it with either the slightly improved one from the uh, kind of reworked version. Or you can go back to the very beginning with Declan Mulholland and have the humanoid Java that they were replacing in the first place. And <laughs> I just find this hilarious that this uh, pin exists. You can, uh, I think their tagline, or maybe, I don't remember if I made this up or, or someone else did, if they did, but you know, you can choose from the worst Javas of all time with uh, this pin, and, and truly these are the three worst Jabba's, I would say, that have appeared in, uh, you know, in any kind of media. But it's a very cool pin, uh, hefty as well. Here you go, on the back we have pictures of each of those Jabba's. 
I am not sure as of this moment whether these are still available. I know they sold out for a while, but uh, maybe they're going to be making more. I'll put a link at least to their um, Etsy shop and Instagram in the description below, and you can check it out. But definitely thought that was pretty cool. Uh, it is a little bit harder to use, I will say, if you take it off this backing card, which, you know, let's be frank, not too many people probably are going to be wearing it or whatever. A pin this size. It's a little hard to get off of here. There we go. Because this entire back part rotates, like, you know, you have to kind of like, you have to hold the front part and, and just do this. If you hold the back, you can't do it at all. But minor, a minor point. Uh, it's all made out of metal, of course. And uh, I just really like this idea. So well done, Nerd Matters. And thanks very much for watching today's collection pickups. Today's video was brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including these Palace VIPs and Angelica Brady. If you'd like to find out how you can support the channel for as little as a dollar a month, click the link in the video description.